And our second scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. You know, when we come into these seasons, a uh, season like Lent, I sometimes it feels like they go by really fast, sometimes it feels like it goes by really slow, and sometimes it feels like both. Uh, but it has been quite a journey for us. Let, let's think back on what we have experienced during the season of Lent. So, so far, we talk about the baptism of Jesus. Then we follow Jesus into the desert, where he was tempted uh, by the devil. Then we heard Jesus start his sermon on the mount, where he talked about the Beatitudes and made salt the light. Then we heard him talking about doing the right things for the right reasons. Then Jesus talked about the cost of being a disciple. Last week, we rode into Jerusalem with Jesus as the crowd celebrated. And even during this week, we consider Jesus this final week on earth. Then his death, and finally today, his resurrection. This is Easter. This is what it comes down to. And again, despite what people think, Easter is more important than Christmas. Don't get me wrong, I like Christmas. But really, if we had Christmas without Easter, would there really be a whole heck of a lot to celebrate? Let's be honest. So, I got a question for you. Why did Jesus have to die on Good Friday? It's not a good question, I promise you. Don't make it an answer. Well, it's more than that. To it for our sins. For our sins. It's really simple. He had to die to atone for our sins. Right? And really simple. Again, not a trick question. To atone for our sins. We made a mistake. Jesus didn't make any mistakes. He died to atone for our sins. So what's the point of Easter? Again, not a trick question. Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. So we can have a new life. We can rise back. He rose up to show that we too can rise up. Jesus <coughs> conquered death. So, Good Friday shows that we don't fear sin. Easter shows we don't fear death. Really simple. It's not complicated. We try to make it far more complicated than it really is. But honestly, that's it. That's what it really boils down to. And, and just think, if Jesus can make something so amazing out of what many would say is the end, because let's be honest, before Jesus, death was the end. Uh, it, there was no coming back from that for anybody else. At least under their own power, of course, we got Lazarus. But Jesus was involved in that too. But if Jesus can make something so amazing out of death, what else can he make amazing? What else can he do? Because when we look at our world, there's a lot of junk. And I'm not just talking about what's coming out of our trash cans and, you know, as we try to stuff it down so we don't have to take it out quite so soon yet. I'm not just talking about that junk. I'm not just talking about the trash 
that is there like that. I'm talking about things in our world, things in our communities, even things in ourselves. Because, let's be honest, there's a lot of hatred in our world right now. There's so many different forms of, of hatred right now. We have sexism, racism, xenophobia, homophobia, transphobia, ageism. Did you know that today is trans recognition day? Now, that means people who are transsexual, transgender, this is their day of recognition. It always happens on March 31st. They're not trying to supersede Easter in any way, shape, or form. Now, I'm not saying you need to be a part of trans uh, gender or anything like that. I'm just saying this is important for us to understand. Because being in hatred of anybody goes against God. Whether you agree with it or not, that's not the point. For example, what about, say, terrorists? Do we agree with them? Absolutely not. Are they somebody that God created? Yes, they are. Should we hate on them? No. Do we dislike and hate what they do? Absolutely. But we should still love them. And that's tough to do, isn't it? It's tough when we're supposed to love somebody that we don't like. Or we don't like what they do, or what they say, or, or what they do with their lives. It's tough. But I will also tell you, Jesus loves them too. If you can prove anywhere in Scripture where I'm wrong, please let me know. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not just reinterpreting this. That's what Jesus says. Then we have things like judgment on people. People who aren't as good as others. Well, I'm not great, but I'm better than them. You ever said that? You don't have to raise your hands. I think we've all said that at some point. We've all judged others. But again, it's not our place. It's not our responsibility. And thank God, it's God and not us. We are not called to judge. We're called to love. And that's a tough thing. It, it's hard to love like Jesus. Because <laughs> Jesus literally loves all. Whether they deserve it or not. Because if we're getting into that, none of us deserve it. And so as we look at all this hatred and all this junk in our world, how can Jesus possibly make anything good out of it? How can Jesus look to this world and say, it's worth saving? While we live here, and even we question that sometimes. Not only do we consider the chaos, the junk of this world, but what about our own messed up, junk-filled lives? Okay, I'm going to try to pronounce some names. I put them down here phonetically, so hopefully I pronounce them correctly. Have any of you heard of Asuncion Paraguay? Anybody? That's okay. I haven't either. But actually, I'm going to talk about Asuncion I'm going to talk about Katip Ka Turaba, which is not far from Asuncion, which is the capital of Paraguay. But Satan is not even a town itself. It's a slum right alongside a landfill in Paraguay. It's where some people choose, well, I say choose, are forced to live. And so, rather than talk too much about it, I have a little video um, that I want you to pay attention to, and there is some audio to this too.
Anybody notice anything about those instruments they were playing? They're made out of junk. They were made out of junk. They didn't really look sandy, did they? This is uh, a group in Paraguay. There was a, a gentleman by the name of Fazio Chavez who was a music teacher. He came to this slum to create a music program. And they had a few standard instruments, but not nearly enough. And so Fabio, along with Cora, a local garbage picker, went through the landfill, along with the students, and began creating instruments. Uh, if you're interested, there's a, uh, a documentary called The Landfill Harmonic uh, from 2015. It's a fascinating But these students, well, they were special. But a lot of people never saw them. A lot of people saw a mountain of trash and a dead end or things that even people. Fabio and his students saw not only instruments in the trash, but Fabio also saw children worthy of attention, children worthy of doing something for. But it wasn't a good area. It wasn't a place where you would look for something wonderful. In fact, Nolia Rios, a 16-year-old violinist, said, really, to be honest with you, there's practically nothing here. What there was most of all was drugs. Not a place you would see something amazing, is it? And yet, Fabio looked past the trash, looked past the drugs, and saw the tusks beside people. In this earth, people, much less children, in third world countries are not worthy of our time. We don't say that out loud, maybe, but by the very definition of calling it third world, we already put it in the hierarchy, don't we? They're below one. They're below two. We don't have anything lower than three, so we're going to stick you there. And yet these students did something amazing. They saw beauty. In fact, they literally played all over the world. They have traveled with their junk and performed in some of the classic music halls. In fact, some of the students have been offered actual instruments, and even though some have accepted them, some have said, no. If you noticed the subtitles at the bottom, one of the little girls said, I love this violin. <laughs> Pretty easy to see the connection. You see, Jesus can make something amazing, something beautiful, something worthy out of the junk that is this world and our lives. But we're hoarders, aren't we? We're hoarders, not only in our physical lives, but in our spiritual lives as well. I mean, we've got television shows called Hoarders about people keeping junk. Have you ever watched those shows? The things that people hang on to. We say, why? Why would you hang on to that? And although we don't have any television shows about hoarding our sins, although some of those reality shows are pretty darn close, God said the same thing about our sin. Why? Why would you hang on to that? Why would you hang on to that junk? And yet we do. Sometimes we even idolize it. And so we need to be shaken up, just like the guards, just like the women. Sometimes we need an earthquake, too, to shake us out of our stupor. We all need to be reminded of the presence of Jesus Christ. We keep looking for salvation. We keep 
looking for grace in the junk of our lives. But we need to be told he is not here. He isn't here in our junk. He isn't here in the mess. We need to go where he leads us. And he doesn't lead us to our hoarded junk except for to tell us what we need to get rid of. But what do we do? We hold it even tighter. Jesus did not die on Friday, get resurrected on Sunday today, so that we can hang on to all the junk. Because what happens is, when we say death can't conquer us, but when we hold on to that stuff, that's what drags us down. That's what keeps us in the tomb. That's what keeps us in death. Now, let's also remember, though, he does lead us to others who are struggling with their own junk. Not because we're better than them, but because we know what they're going through. Because we recognize ourselves in them. We recognize, you know what? You got a lot of junk in your life, so do I. Let's get rid of it together. Let's walk together. Let's throw it away together. There are people out in this world, and maybe it's you, maybe you need to be reminded. He is risen from the dead, and he wants you to get rid of the junk. And here's, here's one of the things that's really sad. That especially these children that were probably hearing this, maybe not audibly, but were hearing it by the way the world treats them, that they are junk, that they are not worthy. And yet, Jesus died and said, you're all, you're all here. You're all beautiful. None of you are junk. I don't always agree with what you do. At no point does he say he agrees with everything we do. But he does say we're beautiful, that we're not junk. That he loves us. He sees the beauty in our junk. We need to see others like us. Maybe you struggle with that. Maybe you struggle with the idea, maybe I am junk. Maybe you had a bad relationship. Maybe you had, had <clears throat> I'm so sorry, but maybe you have parents that treated you that way. You aren't jumped. Nobody is jumped. Here's a classic phrase I remember hearing when I was growing up. God don't make jumped. None of us are jumped. And we're called to be like Thalia. We're called to be like Pula. Let others know that God sees their beauty. Understand that we are in the junk, but we aren't junk. We are better than others. We simply have had our eyes open to what God wants us to see. We've all been in our trash heaps. We've all needed others to help us crawl out of it. Not because they were better than us, but because they saw our need as well. Walking alongside us, and now it's our opportunity as disciples to do the same. You see, to be true disciples, we need to follow discipleship practices like praying, reading scripture, meeting with other believers, seeking God's guidance through direct contact with God through prayer and reading scriptures, or maybe just meeting with others and getting advice. We need to recognize the beauty. Even though this world seems very ugly, we need to see the beauty. We need, again, to be seeking to be a Havia, a Pula, seeing the beauty of the people and the situations around our world. We may see or think we see something that's unworthy. I get it. I, I, there are times I want to lie to. But sometimes God opens our eyes up if we're willing to allow him to do it. We need to not look with human eyes, but the eyes of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. So here's my challenge for you for this week. See through Jesus' eyes to see the beauty and the junk. 